I was probably 19 or 20 visiting my grandparents up in Canada with the whole family in our one room cabin and the, the men pulled out their cigars and it was raining and I felt like I could literally couldn't breathe you know and by this time I'd had lots of exposure to secondhand smoke I didn't really know much about it but it was so thick and I said well you know it's raining and so none of us can really go outside and don't you think that Uncle Bill and Grampy should not smoke their cigars that was the wrong thing to say my grandmother railed me up one side and down the other and this is you know the men folk get to do their cigar smoking and it's important to them and it's important to her that they get to do it and I was very angry and I went for a long walk in the rain <laughs> so uh, I think that maybe there was a little seed at that point around the whole secondhand smoke piece my bachelor's in communications prepared me for everything and nothing at the same time. And uh, for a while, I actually went back to waiting tables. And uh, my first real, real job, what I called real job, I was recruited to be the director of Montperg. Montperg is the Montana Public Interest Research Group and it was an organization that was started by Ralph Nader. And he saw the potential in the college student learning about social change and advocacy and how to create change for the environment in the arena of good government and for consumers. And I really got interested in, in the environmental issues and, and all of them actually. So when I started working for this consulting firm, you know, if someone had asked me at the time, well, what are you going to be doing in 10 years? You know, how people ask you in interviews or, you know, it's for jobs. Well, what do, where do you see yourself in 10 years? I would have said that I would be very involved in working on good government issues and campaign finance reform, uh, not tobacco prevention. But while I was working at that company, uh, it just so happened that uh, they were trying to get FDA regulation passed through Congress and they needed to put pressure on Max Bacchus and so that was how I started with tobacco and didn't really relate to it that that well you know um, didn't understand how big of a bad guy the tobacco industry really is but that was the, the little piece that started me out in that direction. So, you know, as I began to age a little bit, I began to realize that I was more and more sensitive to secondhand smoke in bars. And of course, I love to dance. Most people know that. And, you know, as I was a young adult in Missoula, I would go to the bars, I would go often, and I would have one drink or no drinks and dance. And I knew all the, the men who were really good at swing dancing. And, you know, I just was very, very into dancing. And, but as I got a little older, I couldn't tolerate it. I felt sick. And while I was working for this consulting firm, we had connected with the American Lung Association and the idea came up to write a grant to try passing the first secondhand smoke ordinance in Montana. And so we did that and the first was in Missoula. And so I was the lead organizer to help bring the uh, coalition together and bring physicians together and uh, interest people in getting something like this passed in the community of Missoula. And that was successful, of course, and then um, we moved on to Helena and Great Falls and Bozeman. I ended up working at the Missoula City County Health Department as a tobacco prevention health educator. 
And while I was there, um, the section supervisor for the tobacco prevention program at the state level, she called me to, to ask me if I'd be interested in the program manager job to work for her in the program. And, and I thought I might like to move to Helena and that I might like to be involved in that way in the program. So I waited and waited for them to advertise the job and they weren't getting it advertised and they weren't getting it advertised. And, and another person that I've known for years who had worked for state government, I ran into him at a statewide conference for tobacco prevention and he said, oh, you know, they really need you over there. Why don't you just tell them that you'll go and work as a temp? And I called her up, I called the section supervisor up and I asked her, I said, well, do you think, you know, would you like me to come over and just help, you know, and work as a temp and do you think that would work out and, and then whenever you get the job advertised, I'll go ahead and apply for it. And she said, would you? And I said, I would do that. And so I went over as a temp and became the program manager. And I started on September 12th, 2005. And that was a Monday, and on Wednesday, she resigned. And on Thursday, I was promoted to the section supervisor position. <laughs> so that was September 15th. Two weeks later, the Clean Indoor Air Act was due to take effect. Many folks, many local tobacco prevention specialists out in the counties have been working on this issue this whole time, just as I have, and we've worked together on uh, building the program and helping the people of Montana understand just how important this really is. They've also done an incredible job working with their local law enforcement and health officers and local physicians and other advocates to keep that momentum up so that we could implement the law and, and get to a point of having such high compliance. Because as you know, or as you probably know, most health policy doesn't have compliance in the 90 percentage rate. That's remarkable success. And uh, the people out in the field have done incredible work. Tobacco use in, in Montana is going down, but we have to be very careful and we have to be diligent to make sure that it doesn't head in the other direction because of all these new products and because the industry is relentless. They're all about money and, and they don't care about the health effects. It's obvious. So we have to keep pounding the pavement, you know, doing the good work that we do because we have a formidable adversary.